Gentlemen, awesome to be back with you on MGTOW Money. Today's topic, how to get FU money with your average IQ. Before you get to that, thanks to the ongoing support from the Patreon investors in this channel. And welcome, Roberto, the newest Patreon supporter of this channel. Thank you guys for your support. And thank you to those guys who bought me a cup of coffee via PayPal, Bitcoin on the last video. Men, see the video description today. Become a supporter of this channel. Let's get into it. How to get FU money with your average IQ. Men, I don't know about you. Do you, do you love a good Twitter fight? Now, I'm specifically talking about a good series of arguments from men who are intelligent. And I'm going to define intelligence in terms of from an IQ perspective, that little three-digit score, or at least possibly you have a three-digit score. Uh, I know some of you might even have a two-digit score based upon some of the comments. But anyway, there was a good Twitter fight, if you will, a couple of months ago involving the following. Some of these men you probably know, Jordan Peterson, Stefan Molyneux, on the one side, against a gentleman named who I've mentioned numerous times, Nassim Taleb, the author, statistician. He's also a professor of engineering at NYU. Anyway, the net net of this argument was, does IQ, do IQ scores correlate with, or as is Molyneux and Peterson seem to indicate, actually cause success in life, and specifically material monetary success in life. And Taleb says, net, net, no. And I must admit, six months ago, I would have said, he's wrong. Peterson and Molyneux were, of course, right. Of course it does. If you have a high intelligence, if you've got a 120, 130 IQ, you correspondingly are probably going to earn a lot more money than some guy who's got a, a 90 IQ. However, the net net is, as Taleb works through the math, and by the way, I'll include a link to a lengthy mathematical, and I emphasize that mathematical description he does, he totally destroys this argument. He completely takes it apart. And I think, frankly, I was probably wrong all this time. And I've now shifted my position to where I kind of get what Taleb is saying. The net net here, men, is, and I'll get to how this applies to you in just a second, is that Taleb argues that beyond the level of about 80 or so, and by the way, 80 is, uh, let's just say, mentally retarded. So if you're about 80 or below, you're having a very difficult time every single day of your life operating at all. I, I mean, literally tying your shoes, etc. I'm not exaggerating. However, beyond that, it's all bets are off. Once you're getting in the 90s and 100 or so and even at 120s, etc., anything can happen. It's all across the map. There's lots of people who have extremely high intelligence. They're not doing anything with their life. I'll be discussing some examples of that in just a second. But the point is that Taleb's point, and I want you to l listen to me clearly, men, is that intelligence actually, real intelligence, is about survival. It's about your ability to not to make right decisions, but to know how to avoid making wrong decisions. In other words, it's really sometimes hard to know what's a, what's the right thing to do here. I don't know, but it's much easier to know what's the wrong thing to do. And by learning how to avoid the wrong decisions, you can be extremely intelligent and correspondingly, you can have a great life. Let's get into this in more specifics. Men, one of the points that I've mentioned numerous times, getting married probably for most men is a poor decision. It is a wrong decision, especially for young men. If nothing else, listen to me carefully, young men, purely from a financial risk standpoint, this is a very risky proposition, and it's especially true if you don't want to end up like a man who had commented a few videos ago where he's 60, recently divorced after 39 years of marriage. You don't want to be there. If nothing else, young men, listen up. If you're under 30, don't get married. I can't be any more specific than that. If you're under 30 years old, don't get married, put it off, procrastinate it, put her off, etc. Even if though she's got one foot out the door, let her go. The point is, don't get married until you're at least 30. I wouldn't personally ever get married again. But anyway, the point is, is that you're going to wait as long as possible. Again, you're going to avoid making that decision too. Don't get stuck in a low 
paying job. Don't be a barista at 30. Don't be like a friend of mine who I've known for 20 plus years. And frankly, I am i don't know this guy's IQ, but I can tell it's probably significantly higher than mine. And his academic credentials are a lot better than mine. hes Let's just say he's got professional degrees, etc. This man, without going into details, works in a call center, if you will, a national call center. That's his job. And he's been doing this for many, many years. Now, I'm not saying he's not happy. I'm sure he has a very happy life, etc. And that's all very subjective, etc. But here's my point, man. You want to be hypergamous in your workplace. Whatever job you're doing, you want to be aggressive. You want to be moving up. You want to be moving even if you're moving sideways. But the point is, is that you want to be moving forward in your job because correspondingly, you are maximizing how much money you're making. I've done videos about this before. Again, the only reason that you should be working that job is because you are attempting to maximize your income. I'm not saying you have to switch jobs. I'm not telling you have to change companies, but look for something if nothing else, especially if you're in a large company, inevitably new positions will come up and around. Again, speaking from my own personal experience, I can tell you, you can make a lot of money. You can be tremendously financially beneficial just by moving from job to job within your within your specific company. And that can also be very important in terms of it's a very easy transition. You keep the same benefits, etc. The point it being is that no matter how much you love your job, again, I can't emphasize enough, it only has one purpose to earn you money. Avoid getting stuck. Next, you've got to avoid being impatient. I can speak from personal experience up until my probably my mid to late 30s. I was an extremely impatient person. I think I've gotten a little bit better and certainly I have to work on this on a daily basis. And frankly, stoicism has also helped me. But the point is is that you've got to avoid thinking short term. You can regardless of your IQ. You don't need to have an IQ of 130 to develop your patience. You need to start anticipating right now today whatever level you're in, in particular, if you're starting at the beginning from your your financial life, 15 years. So if it's, if you're age 25 today, plan ahead 15 years from today, you're going to be 40, of course. And yes, of course, the time will pass and it might come a little bit better, a little bit quicker, a little bit later, but you can achieve a few money. I think realistically for any man who's willing to be patient in 15 years. However, again, You're going to need to be hammering away every single day by staying on track with the daily habits that I've discussed in numerous other videos. You've got zero downside, men. You've got zero downside to doing the types of things that I'm talking about. You've got tremendous upside. This, again, is all about being intelligent. Again, you're doing things that are that you're going to do. That you're avoiding certain things. You're avoiding breaking law. You're avoiding blowing money on stupid stuff. The, this is an intelligent way of leading your life. Doing things that have no downside, that are all upside. Finishing men. Intelligence is wisdom applied over the long term and you know what the only thing that matters men is your life's results yeah one commenter had said on the last video well you're not so smart you 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 know there's a lot a lot of other people who are a lot smarter than you a lot of subscribers who are smarter than you iq wise you know what sir you're right my iq is probably barely average but it doesn't matter what matters is my results I walked out of the corporate world when I was in my 40s and I haven't gone back and I'm never going back and I've accumulated a a reasonable pile of cash. I'm doing okay. How about you? The point is, is that you don't need to worry about what are my test scores? What was it? What are my GPAs, et cetera? That's all garbage. That's crap, man. That's irrelevant. Listen to me by listening, reading, by absorbing ideas from people who are really intelligent, and I'm talking about in a real world intelligence, you can achieve F you money. Three takeaways here. Listen carefully. Avoid marriage. Avoid dead end jobs. Avoid being impatient. You do those three things, men. You and 80% of you that are of average IQ, just like me, you will achieve the F you money that you richly deserve. Gentlemen, as always, hit the like button if you found this useful. John Galt, 
out.